Hi, I'm Nilo and this is Billy. Billy is an old friend of mine who is um, helping me because um, I'm dead boring on my own. <laughs> should, uh, I mean, you should really read what I've no. We'll, we'll just start kind of going through this and then, then Billy can rip into me as we go along, right? Okay. So. Games can encourage change in behavior and drive learning. That's the first line of this, this speech I wrote. It's a good line. Do you agree with it? I've heard it before. Yes, it's got a lot of sound words in it. <laughs> Thank you. What, what, what games do you enjoy? Dyson Sphere program right at the moment because it's brand new. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, Space Engineers until they started crashing my computer and I'd love to play Star Citizen but they've taken six years to just stay in Alpha. So those all sound very learning kind of games in a way. Ah, oh, Eco is the best learning game you can ever hope. It teaches you how to master the arts of being human and destroying the planet. Boy, I guess that is part of being human, destroying the planet. Is, I mean, is that really the kind of lesson we want to be sending out to the kids? <laughs> it beats a lot of the other lessons. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if we don't make a change, then we're screwed. Yeah, no one's And going I feel like games do make a change because they teach us about what could happen, both positive and negative your apocalyptic worlds where things went very wrong and your utopian worlds where we are space engineers and star citizens and building Dyson spheres. Oh yeah. The fantasy worlds of our future generations maybe as man. So I think it's kind of like teaching us, I think dystopian and, and utopian stories teach us the sort of extremes that are possible if we don't change our ways or if we um, embrace new ways. No. Okay, that's very philosophical. It is. I can see you are very interested, <laughs> engaged in... Okay, so, so okay, let's go on to the second line I have here, all right? Playing a game should be fun, but you can't play without learning. Yes, if you don't learn, you can't play. I'll go on to the next one because I think it's sort of like two sentences that okay. go together. Whether you're playing tag, chess or make-believe, if you don't know the rules, you can't play. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, even with make-believe, when you were really small and you're like, Okay, now we're going to be pirates, and I'm going to be the captain. It's like, no, I'm going to be the captain. No, you can be the first mate. You're already making up rules to your game. Straight away. And anybody else play. who wants to join into the game, they have to know the rules. Uh -huh. So they have to know that you're pirates, and he's the captain, like and the that's the first brother. mate. Yeah. And, okay, you've got superpowers, but you can only choose one, you know, so... You're constantly making rules as you play games, even without computers or boards or things which where the games have been defined. And and that's kind of part of the learning process. You know, games are are actually repetitive. You keep doing the same thing over and over again. Yes. But until you get better or improve or yeah, you move get, to the next you level. figure out how to do things better by playing the game and making the mistakes kind of like life so so I think that that's kind of a big part about what makes games positive is that they teach you to make mistakes and to learn from those mistakes because otherwise you're not going to progress through the game I wonder how many mistakes developers learn through making games <sighs> I mean <laughs> one of the mistakes we don't learn is it's really hard making games. It's a lot of work and you have to have a lot of passion for it if you really want to make it happen. And then you have to accept that you are dealing with deadlines and those deadlines may come from outside such as publishers 
and then that forces you to put out a game that's not ready yet for instance um, and then you get like like the initial reaction to Cyberpunk 2077 which had a lot of bugs in it although there were a lot of people who could ignore the bugs and still enjoy what was being created but that's the thing there's a lot of pressure on developers to create these games and do it well and mistakes will be made but at least you get something like patches to improve the state of a game once it's actually out there and I feel like like games should maybe start coming out a bit sooner than they're when they're ready, you know, they just get more feedback from users and um, input in terms of testing and debugging, which might actually show you roots of doing things that otherwise you might not actually see on your own because you're just very singularly focused on that one thing. Also, taking in new developments and then incorporating them into your game, like new engines for or machine learning. AI is, I've yeah, heard a rumor about it being very prominent at the it's moment. It's a lot of fun and um, there are some cool libraries to look at to actually start wetting your, what, your beak? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, you'd have to get a beak and then wet it. Yes, well. But, yeah, do they grow? Never mind. <laughs> so, 2020 was a rough year for the whole world. I think we can all agree. But especially for learners and educational institutes, as you were forced to adapt very rapidly to a new learning landscape. Suddenly remote learning is a thing, and some are still struggling to adjust their teaching and learning strategies to this new paradigm. I am convinced that games will play a significant role in the future educational arena and there's no better way, in my opinion, to engage an audience. Mm -hmm. Advancing immersive technologies will bring us into virtual classrooms which will allow us to visualize and interact with anything from molecular bonding to galactic formation. I, was, I mean, that's quite a big bit there. Yes, no. that was quite chunky. It was well said. Very good. Slow, nice. Oh, and I mean, I feel like I did stumble here and there. There's, yeah. there's some tricky bits with words like paradigm and uh, the. <laughs> but I think we can all agree 2020 was a rough year. Yes. And if you're in the educational system, it must have been extremely in interesting. Um, although Christmas, um, with our Christmas Zoom meeting with everybody across the world in China and England and Dubai and yeah, um, we all had the opportunity to say what we were thankful for and each one had their chance and then when my, my nephew um, Dian got his opportunity he said He's thankful for the fact that he hasn't had to go to school for eight months. <laughs> that would make a kid very thankful. Yeah, so I guess, you know, it's all a matter of perspective. <laughs> many, many people may actually be really enjoying kind of like this new, new normal, but hopefully things will go back to, to some all kind of, of normality sooner rather than later. Back to another brick in the wall. Well, you know, let's, let's not get too deep into the wall. Um, uh, I, I wonder how long is this? Oh, we're doing quite well, actually. So, so yeah, I, <laughs> I think I'm just going one to... Minute out of yeah, the no, I think I'm just going to kind of like wrap this up and say that you guys who are living in these interesting times... Sorry, I was probably not in view for most of that, but <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> so, you guys who are living in these interesting times will be the ones that create the new and innovative educational platforms that will redefine learning for future generations. Because games will get the message across. Do you think stroking the beard is too much? No, no. Just close. 
Okay, cool. Just so I touch. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, <laughs> hope you enjoyed our our little discussion. Bye. <laughs>